Welcome to Velocity, the Vista Chamber podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Beld, and it's my privilege to interview the movers, shakers, and changemakers impacting the Vista community and beyond. Today, I'm thrilled to be joined by Brooke Gibbons from Sunny Days Sunshine Center. She's the center supervisor. And the Sunshine Center, it opened in Vista in 2022, and they provide a whole range of services, including um, autism ABA therapy services, pediatric counseling, occupational therapy, PT, rehabilitation, speech therapy, and social skill groups for patients under the age of 18. Sunny Days Sunshine Center was selected as the 2023 Small Business of the Year at the Chamber's Heroes of Vista celebration. So congratulations and welcome, Brooke. Thank you. We're so excited. Glad to have you here. So um, first of all, tell me, how did the Sunshine Center begin and who do you serve? Yeah, so we have a few other centers. Sunny Days was an in-home program. It's been around for for years. Um, And then there's three centers in New Jersey. There's one in Oklahoma. And they decided to open one in Vista, which was really cool. The space is awesome. The the facility is beautiful. Um, And kind of what you were explaining, a wide range of kids with different developmental disabilities, with different motor skill issues. Um, And then we do a lot of parent support groups, a lot of social skill groups, field trips. We just did our first one last weekend. Um, Pretty much any child under 18 with developmental disabilities, there's some sort of service for. Wow, that's amazing. How did you get involved in this kind of work? I, my mom's an occupational therapist, so I grew up going to her clinic and I just remember like always wanting to be there. And then I started coaching Special Olympics when I was 16, which is so much fun. It really kind of solidified that this was a path that I wanted to take. Um, And I think having my mom as an OT definitely was a big, I just was around it all the time. And I think it's so important for kids to be typically developing kids to be around that population of people. Um, And we always talk about it's really important for kids who are not typically developing to be around typical kids. But I think having Typical kids around the autism population or developmentally delayed population really just like shapes kids into being good people. Mm -hmm. Um, And then when I started Special Olympics, it's all adults, but it was it was just so much fun. And I remember everyone telling me, don't make your passion or don't make your hobby into a career. And as a teenager, that really stuck with me. Um, And then finding that there were careers out there that I I could kind of blend the two and um, I started my first ABA job. I was 20. Um, so I'm going on 10 years. Um, but after my first ABA job, I just I really loved it. And I tried OT, I tried speech, I love every kind of sector of providing services for families, but ABA was really, I think, where I felt that my skill set was the most impactful and and the most well served and as far as like all the services that we provide. Wow. So, okay, for folks who don't know, what does ABA mean? So applied behavior analysis, um, we are a little bit, we still do ABA at the center. We're a lot more naturalistic. We're very play-based. Um, we have the swings and the rock walls and the the crash pads, all the things um, that are fun. So we do provide the traditional ABA. We work on life skills, academic skills, okay. um, behavior reduction, kind of, you know, helping our kids be functional out in society. But my goal really is like happy functional members of society, whatever that means for the child and the family. So although we're doing traditional ABA in the center, it's a lot more play based and it's a lot more kind of group focused than the traditional behavior therapy that you might see online. Okay, okay. Um, So what. I know the Sunshine Center is new to Vista and, it, you know, like you said, there are centers in New Jersey, one in Oklahoma. So obviously the founders wanted to start something that would fill a gap. What mm-hmm. gap are you, is your organization filling? Yeah, I think that's the coolest thing. And I'm going to get really excited, <laughs> forgive me. But I think the coolest thing is we're filling that gap of people needing to go to 100 different places for the same child. So when I was working in in-home therapy and all of our staff now come from in-home therapy, I was driving to Poway, Lake Elsinore, Carlsbad in the same day um, to see mm-hmm. different clients. So families are doing the same thing. They're getting their ABA in home and they live in North County or they live in Vista And then they're driving to El Cajon for occupational therapy and they're driving to Temecula for speech therapy. So for a family, especially with multiple kids and multiple schedules to say, okay, I'm going to drop my child off for three hours and they're going to get ABA and then OT and then speech. And I can go make sure my other child gets to their soccer game or or I get to spend time with my other kids kind of one on one. Um, I think it's a really important gap that that we're able to fill. 
Wow, that's amazing. I I think about I'm a mom. I have two kids. Um, I'm driving one to theater practice and one to mm-hmm. baseball practice. And then like one has this at the same time as the other one. And you're driving across town doing all of that. I can't imagine also having to layer in different therapies and driving down to El Cajon, driving up to Orange County, driving over to Riverside, whatever, to to make sure your child has what they need. And so what a lifesaver to be able to provide all of those services right under one roof. I think that to our staff, because they come from in home, they were driving all over to provide services. So now all of us being able to be in one location, we are, we're just so excited to be there every day, but also our staff are they're less burnt out from driving. They're able to provide better services. Um, instead of texting or calling their supervisor and saying, this happened, what do I do next time? I'm there on site, so I'm able to walk into the room and help them in the moment, um, bring a parent in and you know help, help them learn in the moment what the best thing to do is. But I've just never worked in, kind of, I've worked in a lot of different settings and all providing services for the community. But this one, every single staff member is so present because we're only in one location. Um, they're able to take breaks. They're able to to eat their meals in between sessions. Um, and they're constantly coming to me. Every single person on my staff is coming to me every day and they're going, how do I make this better? How do I make this more fun? What's the right thing to do in this situation? And I've never seen that in another setting. Um, and the other settings are great and add so much value, you know, to these families' lives. But I think there's an element to everyone being together and no one having to work one-on-one by themselves. Yeah. Um, is It's we're just able to collaborate and make everything fun and valuable and and a good use of the family's times. That's great. I I think that's really important because not only is it better for the providers and that they can collaborate with peers and the other sectors of the therapies and make sure that they're um, working together and getting a good holistic approach, but the patient benefits Mm -hmm. from that collaboration and from that all hands approach um, around. And then maybe there are times where You might need to have some overlap where two Mm -hmm. providers are working together during one session for something because some of the therapies there's, you know, where one ends and there's overlap. And so I think that's just so fantastic. So the patients are really the winners as well, as well as the parents driving. So it sounds like a win, win, win for everybody. Yeah, that's great. (laughs) That's great. So tell me, um, so I've been to your center. I was there for Mm -hmm. your ribbon cutting. It's beautiful. It's brightly colored. It looks super fun. Um, Tell me about some of the things uh, that the patients can experience while they're there yeah. like with the play therapy for example we got we got really really lucky with the facility we have um it is super brightly colored they all look the same we have like fun stickers of kids and stuff but um the thing i think that is it's really fun for the kids when they come in and they see the center for the first time half the time they're like crying because they don't want to leave which mm. is always a fun sign and i'm like that's great we we want to be here we want You know, they want to be here and play. Um, There are swings in most of the rooms. There's a rock climbing wall. There's like a trapeze swing. I just, um, over the past couple of days, have been building a sensory room. So we have the fun LED lights that sing to the music. Um, We'll put up, we caught these seven foot tall lava lamps that have like fish and seahorses in them. That's fun. Um, It's so fun. And then we'll put kind of like sensory tools on the walls for them. But for them to have a space where they're overwhelmed or they need a break or it's too loud, um, Because we have that beautiful facility, we have enough space to kind of create a different experience for for every individual kid. And every kid has what they need. Every therapist has what they need, um, which is a huge benefit. If a a kid loves Hungry Hungry Hippos, we have it in the closet. Um, If staff needs something, we normally have it. The other thing that's really cool is we have a little outside space. Um, So if they need to go outside, it's completely enclosed. We're the only ones in the building who have access to that space. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll start to put garden boxes in there as spring comes and let the kids plant and, and have their little garden, but having an outdoor and an indoor space, the facility is just, it's huge. There's 20 treatment rooms, um, and then three separate gym areas. So pretty much anytime a kid needs either a, a break, um, to kind of deescalate or they have an excess of energy, there's something for them to do. Great. So do the patients who come from you to come, the patients who come to you, do they use insurance benefits? Are they private pay? What is that like? Yeah, so we can do both. Um, a lot of our, the bulk of our clients are insurance-based, um, which is great because that includes any parent counseling, any parent support groups, field trips. We just went to Rain's um, Horse Therapy Ranch oh, out yeah, in Fallbrook. Great. That's a great um, organization. Amazing. It was so much fun. They got to make the make the food and feed the animals and, and learn about the animals. Um but all of the things that we do, any field trips, um, 
parent counseling, parent support groups. Um, it's all covered by the insurance contracts um, for most clients, which is really nice. We have private pay options. Um, it really just depends on the family, kind of how their insurance handles it. Mm -hmm. um, but something that I love that we do that is kind of unique, and I, I hope that other agencies are able to do this, is take Medi-Cal. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't take Medi-Cal, so we've been able to serve a lot of families um, in Vista who mm. have medical plans who have been on a two- or three-year wait list with My goodness. waiting for services. You know, they they started when their child was three, and now we're getting six-year-olds who haven't had services because we're able to take so many different forms of, of contracts. Wow. I, you know, um, when you're dealing with, with children with developmental delays, um, time is everything. Yeah. And so the earlier you can start with services, the better the impact. So to think that there've been students and kiddos waiting for years, yeah. what an amazing service and opportunity you're able to provide. So that's great. I'm, I'm so glad that you're able to, to serve all of our populations. That's fantastic. Um, so what is your absolute most favorite part of the work that you do? I, that's such a hard question. It is. I'm I, sure it's, I can tell it's very rewarding for you. It's so much fun. I, I love it. I feel like there's, I'm not a big like universe person, but I feel like this is definitely what I've done so many things and been in so many different spaces in this area. But what we're doing is definitely, I think what I'm kind of built to do. Um, but I've also worked, I think, you know, from from the entry level jobs in this field up to being the center supervisor. So I uh, still the most rewarding thing for me is being one on one with the kids. It's mm -hmm. so much fun. Um, I always tell the girls like your job is a lot harder and your job is also a lot more fun. Um, I can do the reports and the insurance stuff all day, but it is so much more fun to be sitting on the floor playing with Play-Doh with a kid or so much more fun to be kind of problem solving and um I think really to answer your question, though, I love that we never know what day we're going to have. I can never anticipate what kind of day we're going to have. We really have to be present and in the moment and creative and collaborative. And there's something about being in this industry that you are constantly learning every single day. Um, and we never feel stagnant. We never feel complacent with what we're doing. And there's, you know, whether it's the girl who is sitting there shadowing or it's me or it's our occupational therapist. Um, I just love that there's always, always opportunities where we're all learning and growing. It's fantastic. I can, I can really see that you have such passion for your work, which is what gives you purpose in life, right? Is to, to do what's passionate for you. So, but I'm sure there are things that are hard as well. Mm -hmm. So tell me what's the hardest part of the job that you do? I, we've been one, so, so fortunate with our families. Um, every family we got, we got a huge population from Vista there recommending kids in their class they're recommending their neighbors a lot of you know they're they're referring other families to us and we've been so incredibly lucky that our families are just fantastic um to this day we haven't had an issue an angry parent um our parents are so involved and collaborative with that comes being really involved in these people's lives and being really involved in the parts of their lives that aren't you know blowing bubbles and playing with play-doh mm -hmm. and um we do have days where at the end of the day on Monday, for example, three of us were just laying on the floor, de-escalating ourselves, yeah. um, you know, collaborating on, OK, next time, um, next time, what are we going to do differently in mm -hmm. a situation where maybe there was a behavioral outburst um, or maybe we felt like there were things we could have done differently? Um, I think the hardest thing is, is that like we want to share everything with the families that's beautiful and wonderful and all the great things that they did. Also doing our jobs and you having know, boundaries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. do, doing our jobs and also sharing the parts with families that maybe weren't so fun and pretty during mm -hmm. the session. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, our families have just been great with that. So it's always, it's always awkward maybe to say, Hey, this happened and we just want to let you know, um, all of our families are just so receptive to it and, um, you know, asking us what can we do at home? So it's getting easier and easier, but I'm just really not a confrontational person. So if we're having an issue, you know, where, um, we really do need to sit down and talk with a parent, whether it's billing or scheduling or behavior. Um, you know, thankfully our families are fantastic, so it's, it's easier and easier, but there are parts of it that we're all still learning kind of how to ha handle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for keeping it real because not everything <laughs> is sunshine and roses, especially when you're doing the work that you're doing mm -hmm. is emotional and I'm sure that, you know, there are days when you come home and you're like, I am exhausted. 
And then there's probably days where you come home and you're so energized and just so excited about everything that you've done. So, yeah. yeah. Actually, we have a rule in our house that I uh, I have a 30 minute window to share everything. And then we turn our brains off and we enjoy our family because mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I could just come home and like retell every single thing that happened throughout the day. <laughs> That's so funny. I have my husband and I have a 15 minute rule. So 15. We we, but we've been married for a very long time. So at this point, it's like, okay, you get 15 minutes. Tell me about your day. And then we're going to focus on family stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. When my husband hears that, he's going to change our role to 15 minutes. Okay, we can, we can just edit that out. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> at JNR Auto Body and Paint, you don't have to worry about a thing. From minor dents and dings to major collision repair, we offer a worry, hassle-free experience with superior customer service. Our auto claim advisors work directly with your insurance company so you don't have to deal with the headaches. Our certified technicians work on all makes and models to get your repair done right the first time. We stand behind our work with a lifetime warranty. Locally and family owned, JNR Auto Body is here to serve the community. Call us today at 760-724-4923. Hi, it's Carrie from Solitube Home in Vista, California. If you're looking for ways to brighten and cool your home, we are your natural light and fresh air experts. We offer a selection of daylighting and ventilation products to help make your home beautiful and comfortable. And the best part of all is you won't be using any electricity to brighten up. We can bring beautiful natural light into those dark spaces in your home, transforming them into beautifully lit spaces in less than two hours. No mess, no fuss, just amazing natural light to make your home look and feel great. If you're looking to cool off your home, we have a complete line of ventilation products to keep your home and garage cool. We want to make cooling and refreshing your home easier and more energy efficient than ever with our line of whole house fans, solar attic fans, and garage fans. Our certified installers carry the full line of SolarTube daylighting and ventilation products on their vans at all times. Installation can usually be done in about two hours. No messy drywall, paint repair, structural changes, or re-roofing needed. It's pretty much the easiest home improvement project you'll ever take on. At SolarTube Home, we offer no obligation appointments throughout Southern California. Visit our website at solitubehome.com or stop by our showroom conveniently located in Vista at 2210 Oak Ridge Drive or give us a call, 619-375-1629. We look forward to brightening your day. For more than 60 years, Tri-City Medical Center has been committed to advancing the health and wellness of the community we serve. With leading edge emergency care, including top rated heart and stroke programs, advanced orthopedics, primary care, obstetrics, and neonatal care, Tri-City stands at the ready when you need us most. Learn more at tricitymed.org. What do you want people to really know? Like if you just had to say in a nugget, what do you want people to know about Sunny Days Sunshine Center? I think it's some of the things that we talked about our staff, um, our staff are, and whether it's the setting or our clients who are awesome or whatever it is. Um, I, I believe in the science. I believe in the research. We do everything in our power to be, you know, ethical and, and do what we know is best, what science tells us, but our team is very, very people first. Um, and, Every single person on our staff really just wants happy, functional, healthy individuals and whatever that means, again, for every single kid, every single family. Um, But they're good people. Every question that they come to me with is, you know, can you watch back? Because we, which I love, we're very, very transparent. So the parents can be in the session or they can watch and listen on an iPad. Every room has a camera. They can watch their own child um, and know everything going on in the session. I think the transparency is a huge deal for us. I never want a family to feel like they're not a part of what we're doing with their child. Um, but our staff is just, they're full of good people who want to do what's best for the community, want to do what's best for the children. Um, and they're having fun. And I think that's a huge point is our kids are having fun while they're learning, while they're playing, because our staff are, they're being silly and they're singing and they're, they're swinging on the swings with everyone. But, um, as much as this field can be, you know, it's, it's a medical service and it's um, provided as a medical service. And as much as that can be difficult or tiring or exhausting, having good people who want the best for the community that we're serving behind it, um, I'm just seeing so much growth and I'm seeing so much progress and our families are seeing so much progress. But um, that's really, I think the foundation is everyone is a person first, whether they're five, you know, we get this five-year-old who's going to be 30, 40, 50 years old one day. 
And the first question everyone on staff is thinking is, what do I need to teach them that's going to help them be functional when they're 40, 50, 60 years old? Mm -hmm. If they're going to drive, if they're going to have a job, if they're going to date, like what are the skills now that are important for me to be teaching? And equally as important, we're always asking ourselves, are we are we teaching something just for the sake of teaching it? Is this actually a skill that we need to be teaching or are we just trying to do something? So we're always thinking about what what the best thing to do is. And a lot of that is our people on the ground floor in the rooms with the kids who are who are asking those questions and, and making sure that what we're doing is a good, valuable use of these families' time. And um, I do think all service providers are wonderful. I think everyone has the best intention. Every agency is doing the best they can, especially after COVID. Um, but we're just based with good people. And it's also reminds me to be a good person. <laughs> it's all about the people. Yeah. So how can families find you if they want to come to you for services? We're getting, I mean, joining the chamber was 100% the best thing we could have done. We've met so many other service providers. We've met so many cool contacts, um, places who are opening up their facilities for our kids to go do field trips. Um, so I think we are in the Vista magazine, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong. Um, we're in the, in the chamber magazine. Um, you can Google sunny day, sunshine center, Vista. Again, our families are awesome. So there's a bunch of really cool reviews on there. A lot of pictures and videos of what a session might look like. Um, sunny day, sunshine center.com has all the information about all the services. You can do your intake packet there. Um, or you can just call the center. Um, Jennifer is at our front desk. Um, Shilpa is our occupational therapist. I also have a phone at my desk. So um, a lot of people just call and they say, oh, I saw Instagram or I saw the Google reviews or we have had a lot of people call and say, oh, I saw the Heroes of Vista thing, which is so cool. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you about, yeah. about Heroes and what that was like to be when you heard Sunny Days Sunshine Center, when you saw it on the screen as the winner. What did that feel yeah. like? It was it was so cool. And I think it felt like it didn't feel real until I was like holding all the awards. Um but it's such a cool recognition for one, our staff and, and what they're doing. Um, I love to be in session, but I also get to sit behind a desk for half the day. Um, and they're running around sweating and playing. And I think it was really, really a good recognition and good acknowledgement for all the work that they're doing. Um, and all of them coming from in home, all of us learning. We we got the keys and an empty facility and it was really hard for a long time for us to feel like what we were doing was impactful and what we were doing we were doing it in the best fashion. And um, I was, I mean, even for me, it was acknowledgement that what we're doing is working and what we're doing, um, you know, is so one, something for us to be proud of, but something that we feel good that the families are, you know, we feel like we're providing a good, safe, effective place for the families. And really my, my most important thing is like, how can we get more families? How all these families who have been on wait lists for five, six years, um, so you have capacity. You can, you're still ramping up. You yeah. can take more clients. Yeah. We don't so, have a wait list right now. Okay. Um, and I will plug that in any setting. We don't have a wait list right now. Okay. Um, and you don't need a doctor's referral from, or you so, might. So we might. Um, kids who have a diagnosis often don't. Kids who have an IEP who are, you know, already diagnosed with any sort of developmental delay. Um, some kids aren't. And that's a lot of kids who are on wait lists is they don't have a diagnosis. Okay. So they're on a wait list. We've been really fortunate. Um, we've built really good relationships with the insurance companies and um, a doctor referral sometimes is something that we can do for families who, okay. um, again, we're getting, I mean, 13 year olds who have mm -hmm. been on wait lists for five years. Um, and we're able to, one, not only get them in within a week or two, but if they call, we're able to get their evaluation done in a week and mm -hmm. then the next week start services. Um, and that's a huge thing for families. So Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Um all right. Anything else you want to share before we move into my rapid fire questions? No. Okay. Rapid fire sounds fun though. Okay. Okay. Um, I do want to mention and acknowledge for those folks watching on video that we are wearing matching outfits. We yeah. did not plan it, <laughs> but it's fun. So it's identical. Yeah, it is. That's, <laughs> that's funny. Um, okay. So on to rapid fire. Tell me a book that's important to you. A book, maybe everyone should read it. Maybe everyone should read it to their kid. Tell me a book that's important to you. Can I tell you two? Okay. Okay. Yes, you can. So one, personally, and it's it's not really a book. It's like one of those just flip through and read when you have time, but 100 Things to Do Before You Die. Okay. Um, my, actually, my mom gave it to me when um, when I was younger, but it's it's honestly just like a checklist of like things you should do before you die and why. Um, and we get a service provider so sucked into what we do where it's like our entire personality 
very similar to teachers. And I think for us to be good service providers, we need a line and we need kind of our own, you know, our own lives and things to be excited about too. So that's always what I keep on my desk. One I love for therapy is what would Danny do? Okay. I don't know if you know what mm-hmm. that is. So it's basically like choose your own adventure for kids. Um, and I loved choose your own adventure, but it gives you a situation. Danny's at breakfast with his brother and his brother knocks over his cup. What should Danny do? And there's two choices. And if they pick oh, I should scream at him. It's going to say, turn to page 56. Mm-hmm. And here's the the consequence of that action. Or, oh, I should say, it's okay, I'll pick it up. And here's the consequence of that action if you turn to page 45. And one, it's really fun, but it's so engaging because you don't know when it's going to end. So for kids who are working on like um, staying on task or paying attention or problem solving, social skills, um, it really hits like every single point of what we're trying to teach these kids. Um, and it is really fun because you just don't know where it's going to go or or when it's going to end. Yeah. I mm-hmm. could think of a few adults that could potentially learn from that book as well. Could probably learn from that book too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Brooke, what's your favorite song? Tell me your jam. What song do you always have to turn it up? I My playlist is very all over the place, um, which again, keeps it spicy. I like it, but it's like, it'll be like Cheetah Girls in Hannah Montana and then like Rap and then country. Country is definitely my constant. I listen okay. to a lot of country. Um, but then I'll throw in like Wicked or Rent, uh, Hairspray, some show tunes. It is consistently all over the place. But um, I like it. And the kids are really, I haven't seen a lot of the new Disney movies. But um, I love the soundtrack from Moana now. I haven't seen it. But oh, I know. Oh, it's so good. Every you have to single see- word. I have to see it. I yeah. know. Every, I'm obsessed with the chicken now mm-hmm. um, and Pua because the kids teach me about it. Mm-hmm. Um, Moana is a big, big one in our clinic. And then um, Coco. Oh, that, it's beautiful. Another one I know. Everyone says it's great. I still have to see it. But I could probably recite every single word because we're just playing it on the speakers all day. Yeah. When you want to have a good cry, like a good sentimental cry. Uh-huh. Coco. Coco. Yeah. Okay. Go Good for it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Tell me something that inspires you. It's going to sound really cheesy. And I kind of felt like this question was going to come, but I have to keep going back to our staff. Um, mm-hmm. Again, I've worked in so many settings and all of the settings are providing services for family in the community or for families in the community. Um, and again, that's what I love to do, but I've never worked in a setting where every single person, a hundred percent of our staff every day is going, can you like force someone to go to their boss and say, can you watch back on the cameras, look at what happened and tell me what I could do differently next time. I get that question every day from our girls. I just say girls because we don't have men on staff yet, but um, it's it's a really cool, inspiring thing for me to remember too that I was in their position not that long ago that, you know, I was a registered behavior technician. Um, I was a graduate student like they are trying to get their BCBA. Um, and it always kind of pulls me back to, You know, I can write reports all day long and make phone calls to insurance companies all day long, but that's not why we're here. Um, And it's it's mind blowing to me because it's 100 percent of our staff every single day. Um, And sometimes it can be intimidating to go to your boss and be like, hey, I messed up. Um, But none of them have that. They all are just like trying to do their best every single day, trying to make it as fun as they can. A girl the other day came to me and was like, I want to build a fort. Um, And I was like, "Okay." She took the little LED lights. We built a fort um, and they did session for two hours, like in this little tent with beach blankets that we had made. Um, something I never would have thought to do for a kid who needed, you know, different sensory breaks than our normal kids who want to swing and climb and play. And she, I had told her, OK, and, you know, encourage him to swing, encourage him to climb. And she came back and she was like, I know you're my boss and you told me to do this, but it's not working. And mm-hmm. I have this idea. And, you know, for them to critically think like that, to not be scared to make mistakes. Um, something we really try to, um, to instill is we almost will never have the right answer, but we will continue to try different things until something sticks. Um, but they just continually like amaze me and all of them. We all started this together. Um, you know, there wasn't really a lot of time in between me being hired and the staff being hired. Um, and even our OT, our office manager, just everybody is like, Reminds me why we're here every single day. And I'm a very high strung person. So I'll get really caught up in, I have five kids on our, you know, waiting for their stuff to come back, but they're, it's so cheesy, but they're just like so inspiring. That's not cheesy at all. It's great. It's great. That's amazing that you love your team so much and that you are, you all are accomplishing so much together. Okay. Last question. Tell me a Vista business you think deserves a shout out. Um, 
there are so many. Um, there are so many service providers, and that's really my, you know, my realm. All the swim schools, all the, um, all the different preschools, and um, especially all the um, the charter schools because they don't have a lot of resources, and they have a lot of kids who need services. And teachers are sweating trying to figure out. You know, they're overstaffed. Um, but one specifically, I could think of like forty. Um, well, I know I said the chamber, but we're just. I say it every day, joining the chamber was 100% the best thing for our business. Um, and we're very, very grateful for every opportunity we've had. Here's a Vista, again, just like put us on the map, which is awesome. Um, I just keep thinking of like, the honestly, Vista Unified School District. Yeah. We have Vista Unified. We have so many kids from there mm -hmm. and their teams. It's Sometimes it's hard for teachers or a school occupational therapist to be collaborative with an outside agency. Um, and they've invited me to every meeting. They've allowed me to sit in on IEPs, to sit in on parent consultations. Um, and every single person in the district, regardless of the school, just the entire district has been so, so collaborative. Mm -hmm. And those are the kids that are growing. But it's um, they're just, again, wonderful people trying to do the best. Um, and a lot of times we don't, you know, having an outside agency again, come in and say, oh, here's what we're doing. Um we try to be as collaborative as we can, but they're so, so open um, and they're so helpful to us. That's um, great. We have a great relationship with Vista Unified as well mm -hmm. at the chamber with regard to connecting business and education and creating internship opportunities for students. So I'm glad to hear that they're collaborative in this regard as well. So that's a good one. Vista Unified, yeah. thumbs up. Um, okay, that's it. We did it. Awesome. Thank you so much thank to you. our guests. Yes, thank so you. Cool. Thank you so much to our guest, Brooke Gibbons, for joining us today. And congratulations again to Sunny Day Sunshine Center for being the 2023 Heroes of Vista Small Business of the Year. Thank you all for listening. If you like what you heard, please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and tell a friend. Help us move Vista forward with Velocity. The Vista Chamber is a nonprofit organization that serves as a catalyst for business growth. Find us online at www.vistachamber.org. <laughs>